Welcome back to Life by the Bow. So last year we did this exact same thing. We did kind of a review of our 2021. So this year we thought it'd be a great idea to kind of reflect back on the year we've had in 2022. Um, Which so. is crazy. That video last year has about 150,000 views so far. Mm. So we kind of did it on a whim, but turns out the people loved it. So like Stephanie said, we're just gonna break down some of our biggest videos of the year that necessarily you guys don't get to hear the full story behind and just yeah. give you guys a little extra behind the scenes information. Yeah, so. well, before we even start, we just wanna thank you guys mm -hmm. for sticking throughout 2022, or if you're new to the channel, thanks for just hanging along for the few videos you've watched. And, and we hope everyone had an awesome Christmas yeah, as well. Yeah, so. yeah. And we hope that everyone has a fantastic new year. Yep. Um, we'll get to all that in the end, but let's go ahead. Yes. Let's hop right into it. All right. So we're going to start from video 10 to, and then we're going to move along to the top video of our favorite video and the crowd's favorite. Mm -hmm. So number 10 is going to be, this boat is going to disturb the boat market. So that was a really cool video only because like that was our reaction. You guys got to see our reaction of actually receiving our boat. That was the first time we've ever even seen it. And um, the first time we've ever ridden in it. I mean, mm -hmm. we didn't test drive this boat. It was, it was something that we saw like a different model that was very similar. What was it? The TRS? Yeah, the TRS. We yeah. saw it at the... Uh pathfinder owners tournament yeah but it's a different setup than the open yeah it's, it's more, more family like, style more of a yeah. family friendly boat but yeah. just to kind of feed off of what stephanie was saying when i first saw the boat it was a 3d rendering mm -hmm. yeah and up until the point where we took delivery of the boat i still had never seen this boat or ridden on it in person but I had a lot of faith and trust in Pathfinder mm -hmm. just because we did so much out of our 23 Pathfinder. Yeah. I just knew like, look, this 24, it's a bad boat. Like yeah. it looks great. You know, I'm sure it's gonna run great. And at the same exact time, it has an open cockpit, which is fantastic for offshore fishing, which is majority of what we do. But so much emotion behind that video. And a lot of people kind of, you know, ragged on the title of the video and of course like it was a little extra but at the same exact time what a lot of people don't realize about that boat it's still a bay boat on the bottom it still gets in about a foot of water and you could still fish it offshore not to mention it just has so many cool features that we're just so excited to use all throughout 2023 to just continue to make really great content. But anything yeah. specific that... Well, I mean, I guess like for from my point of view about mm -hmm. that whole video, it was just really cool because it was actually the first boat that I've, at, I've sat down with Clay and like put in my two cents of like what I want. So it was really, it was a neat process to kind of go through that with him. And then also it's just like when you are on the boat, like every week you figure out things that you like and dislike about a boat and you learn a little bit more about yourself too mm -hmm. and like that's what this boat like just signifies it's it's basically everything that we we think that we want at this time which is you know it's really cool i'm excited to like really put it to use but for sure let's go ahead and move on to number nine let's do it all right so number nine is fishing untouched parts of the floor of of florida 100 miles offshore so this was in Steen Hatchie. Mm -hmm. So we had the chance to fish with a fishing charter and of course, hang out with John, which was amazing. Like we yeah. had such a great time. I think the biggest thing to note about that before we actually get into the video is there, or not the video, the actual description of the video, Yeah, is John and Connor, they actually bought our old contender. Yeah. So they came down to the Keys, they yeah. spent a week down here very sad because we sold our boat and we didn't get to use a big boat or we didn't have access to a big boat throughout the rest of the summer and basically all throughout the fall, mm -hmm. which in our opinion is the best time to fish down here in the Keys. So, and just the best time to head over to the Bahamas too. Yeah, really yeah. great time yeah. to head to the Bahamas, <laughs> which is mainly what <laughs> we enjoy using that boat for. But basically, you know, back in July when they bought the boat, there was just 
some type of chat or were like, you know, they said, they said like, oh, you guys should come up to Steen Hatchie. You should fish mm -hmm. with us. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I would love to. But, you know, sometimes you talk about things and it and doesn't never necessarily happen. Yeah, happen. yeah. And we went there in October mm -hmm. and we hadn't had the boat for about three months since then. So I was just so <laughs> pumped, not only to just be in our old boat again, but at the same exact time, just fish an entirely new area, mm -hmm. 100 miles offshore. Yeah. You know, our typical Bahamas crossings are about 100 miles. So it was just insane. We were driving pitch black in the dark. And then you're sitting there thinking in your head, like, man, we're going all this way and we're doing all this work. And we're basically, you know, it's risky driving a boat yeah. at night. Yeah. Um, especially as fast as we're going. You hit something, it can be really dangerous. But the way we built the boat... You know, we made sure we had all the necessary equipment to do that. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of cool seeing somebody else use what you built in a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And then once we got there and we just caught all of the fish, it was just insane. Like it was nonstop. It happened faster than we can film. Yeah. It was a lot of action. It was fun. I actually caught my first red fish. Um, red snapper. I mean, what did I just say? Redfish? Red snapper. It snap is a red fish. Sorry, red, red snapper. snapper. I always refer to it as a... <laughs> Redfish, it's which a is red a backcountry. I mean, you weren't wrong. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's a red snapper. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, it was really cool. It was just a lot of fun to see all of the working hands on the boat too. Like mm -hmm. we were all working together to catch them. I mean, when you're having so much action, there has to be someone on deck just ready to gaff a fish and bring it onto the boat. Yeah. Especially at the all the chaos that was going on it was mm -hmm. just it was great and it was it was cool because we were fishing with john's son as well johnny. so johnny yeah. yeah and which is going to be mating on the boat yes for the charter yes, so yes. connor is the captain johnny is going to be the mate which is john's son yeah and uh you guys are ever in north yeah northwest florida yeah and you want to go fishing on a really bad charter i mean when i say bad i mean like bad good <laughs> Check them out, Finn Seeker Charters. But it was just an awesome time, cool time being in a new area. Yeah. And you want to talk about just some really good, down to earth people? Yes. That's them. Well, and just, that's what I enjoyed more than anything, to be honest. Was yeah. Just hanging out with and them. just the town itself. Like when we were going around, everyone was just so, so nice. So nice in Steen And yeah, welcoming. And that's not something you find everywhere exactly especially so, being in south florida yeah i'm gonna be brutally honest <laughs> yeah it depends where you're at but everyone yeah. there was so welcoming like even um at the restaurant i forget what it was called it was do you remember the restaurant we had all the food there's a bunch of different yeah. places we okay went to while we were well anyways there. we went to a few different restaurants and every single one of them that we went to you're greeted with a smile and it's just so refreshing to see yeah. that good time it was. So let's keep on going yeah let's go so number eight is fishing the unexplored ocean for deep sea creatures. So this was actually the first video of 2022. Yes. Just thought I might add that. And I will tell you, when we first picked up the thresher shark, I like didn't know what it was. I, yeah. I'd never seen one before. That was my first encounter with a thresher shark. And you know, knowing the power that that shark has is insane. The fact that we were even close to it because they whip their tails so hard that they break molecules of um, H2O and break it into single atoms, so hydrogen and oxygen. And the fact that it's that strong to do that. And I'm sitting there grabbing it by the yeah, tail. And like, I'm like, oh, look at this shark. Yeah, like, like probably, and then later on, we looked up all the uh, crazy facts you know, about it. Yeah, uh, about we were the watching thresher shark, and I'm like, videos dang, I can't believe I did that. I but, know, I know. Yeah, we, we thought we had like we thought we hooked like a submarine on yeah. the bottom because we don't it know was what moving we're yeah yeah but, but it, it felt just, like just dead weight it exactly. wasn't really fighting like a typical fish would mm -hmm. it was literally just like it took hanging one down. hard run though initially yeah and then like we thought like oh like maybe it was like a swordfish that got like wrapped around something, something. way way on the bottom and then i was like that doesn't make sense yeah and then the closer it got like we started to realize it was a thresher shark i know and the eyes on it and just the way that the body was shaped, I mean, easily like a once in a lifetime fish, I yeah. would say. I mean, we'll be lucky if we ever catch a thresher shark ever again. And not to mention it was on the 23 Pathfinder too. Right? After that, we ended up catching a swordfish. Wasn't big enough to keep. I know. But the fact that we did all of that out of a 23 foot bay boat, 
that's what I thought was most cool more so over anything. Mm -hmm. And something that I think I'd like to add and I think was really cool is I did like a short form version of that video and posted it on Instagram. Mm. And Garmin reached out to me after that. Yeah. And they were like, hey, this is so awesome, yada, yada, yada. And that video actually started my relationship with Garmin. Mm -hmm. So I thought that that was really cool to yeah. add. Yeah, so. that is cool. Behind the scenes. Yep. All right, let's move on to number seven. Discovering an island Florida Keys locals don't believe exists. So this is one Ooh. that was... That was really fun because it came out beautifully and rewarding. But it was a challenge. Yes, very but it, rewarding. It was just like everything leading up to that hogfish was just complete chaos and letdown <laughs> yeah. because we were trying to spearfish originally, mm -hmm. and we could. But prior to spearfishing, we'd went out four times in a row just to try to catch something to make a video, and yeah. there was about four to five failures before this video. Yeah. And we didn't post those for you guys. Of course not. I yeah. mean, to me, it's just boring content. Yeah. I mean, we just try to bring you guys some good content. Mm -hmm. Good content. And with that is, you know, we want to catch something to show you guys. We've been working on making it a lot more real lately, like yeah. showing those lost fish and me dropping fish in the water, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. But uh, yeah, it's funny. Like Stephanie was saying, prior to that you know we had that whole thing where we yeah. couldn't catch a fish we started out spear fishing and during that video yeah so this and, video did not start out just going after a hogfish it was really we were going spear, spear fishing. fishing and we couldn't make that happen so we ended up switching gears coming back to the dock grabbing new tackle mm -hmm. and just going after hogfish so the fact that we were actually able to catch two legal hogfish which is very hard to come by and another thing is too we had the idea of going hog fishing because yeah. hogfish season just, just opened yes. up so the fact that the season opened we were excited yeah. about that yeah we were so pumped that we actually caught the hogfish yes. and like it was like this curse had been lifted off of us because <laughs> we took we're... the skunk off the boat. <laughs> exactly. And like, of course, we can always go after the muttons or, yeah. you know, other species that we know that we can catch for sure. Yeah. But we're just trying to bring new content. And we're just like thinking, well, what can we do that's a little refreshing that we haven't filmed in a little while? And hogfish was it. Yeah. That was the ticket. It happened. And we were done by like what? Like 10, 11 o'clock. Yeah, it was really quick. So. And then the day was just beautiful after that. Yeah. And then we went off to the island and mm -hmm. we just hung out and just talked to you guys a little bit, um, which was really cap captivating the Keys life. Yeah. You know, and the what's... lifestyle that the Keys has to offer. Like typical, typical residents, what they'll do is they'll go fishing half the day. And they'll go hang out at a sandbar. Mm -hmm. So, and what's interesting about that island, and I think it's really funny about that island, when it first popped up, it mm -hmm. was after like some type of hurricane that mm -hmm. we had. That island, it'll typically wash up. All the sand washes up, becomes an island after a big storm, mm -hmm. and then after a little while, it dissipates. And what happened was, is the island formed. Then I guess a bunch of birds came and nested on the island. Yeah. And then FWC came out there and they made the island off limits just yeah. because of the bird nesting. Mm -hmm. And then a couple weeks later, the island got washed away. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of controversy about that island where people were upset that people were on it prior and afterward, afterwards. And that's why we kind of just kept that island kind of hush hush. Yeah. Just because we didn't want to promote the island on our end because People were very weary about others in this island and kind of got to be like a sticky situation. But yeah. a cool spot. Really it cool is. spot. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. So number six would be 24 hours in isolation, camping and fishing on a remote cheeky. And this one was in the Everglades. Really cool. Um, I really enjoyed this, like, type of camping only because I felt like safe staying on a cheeky at night when we we're sleeping. Like something that I am is a very light sleeper. So any noise, anything, just like it could be my dog snoring next to us and I'm like, I'm awake. So when I'm able to, or like any movement at all in the bed, I wake up. So the fact that I was able to just rest, rest without any movement on the boat 
<laughs> were leading to that <laughs> was amazing because I had a really good night's sleep and sleep is very important to me as well. So, um, well, I think I just the biggest thing you left out about all that is just the fishing prior to the to the camping because we just had a phenomenal day of fishing, and then like that's right. The, the cheeky was so far away from like actual civilization. So yeah. there was kind of like this journey getting to the cheeky, you know, like maneuvering around, you know, sketchy waterways. It gets real sketchy in the back country just to be able to get to these cheekies. So we kind of did that and dealt with those types of factors throughout the day, had phenomenal fishing. And then finally we got to the cheeky and it was like, ah, finally we made it. And we we're very curious. We were like, What's it going to be like when mm -hmm. we actually get there? Because these cheekies are very low key. Yeah. But you can book them. You have to uh, basically book the cheekies, make sure that you reserve them because sometimes they do fill up. Yeah. But basically, you don't really know what to expect. There's one no. like little porta potty sitting there when we got there. And we just kind of just figured out okay, how are we going to make this platform our home in the middle of nowhere, you know, for the next couple hours? And we just kind of hung out there, played some guitar, made some veggie burgers, which were terrible. <laughs> they tasted good, but hey, they, they, were, they, but they great. broke apart. That's yeah, why I say yeah. they were terrible. Yeah. But we just had such a good time just hanging out, fishing off the cheeky yeah. and just and doing an, something different. Yeah, and another thing that is unusual that actually went very well was the weather. Because yeah, it dropped, I would say, to what, the 50s? Was yeah, it in the it was 50s? Beautiful. So all the bugs kind of just disappeared because when we first got there, the bugs were coming out, but then they ended up just disappearing when when the cool weather came mm -hmm. about. So like the fact that we the what the fact that the weather cooperated just yeah. made that whole experience even more exciting because we were catching fish we didn't have to worry about bugs so like a lot of people commented about like oh I the was bugs. About to say yeah that. like the yeah. bugs destroyed you but no they didn't that's why like it, it was just it was such so a cool experience yeah. yeah and like we were catching sharks you know off the cheeky we we're the catching snook were snook. popping at yeah night. it was so cool it was just like an overall like that's what i would say a perfect camping trick it's supposed to be like it's, essentially yeah and looks like yeah yeah because everything was just awesome but anyways but one thing i just want to end off it's yeah. just cool because it's like we're typically here in the keys like yeah. you guys see the clear water and it's just something a little different yeah so yeah we're gonna sure. try to do more of that this yeah. year yeah all right go ahead all right next one number five. Ooh. Florida hidden gem fishing for cobia, mahi, grouper, and scallops. So this was in Crystal River. And it's funny that those two are back to back because it's kind of like that similar situation. Yeah, like the that water. Dirty yeah. water, kind of like camping feel in that mm -hmm, video. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you go ahead. Well, I just love Crystal River. So yeah, it's where Stephanie and I got engaged. Yeah, you've you probably already know this. We mentioned it last year. Mm -hmm. But that that place. And in all, like, there's a lot of things to do. I really suggest, like, if you want something to take your family to where everyone of all ages can enjoy, it's definitely Crystal River because the scalloping is amazing. Although we didn't really spend too much time scalloping this year. We hung out with your cousin and... Um, I just feel so guilty filling up, like, a five-gallon bucket full of scallops. Yeah. Like, why? to me, it's about the scalloping. It's not yeah. about the scallops. So it's well, like, I think they're tasty, so yeah, I don't mind. Great. Yeah, they're great. Catch a couple, put them in some ceviche and call it a day. But yeah. then again, I may be knocking some family traditions. So that's just my opinion. But I can understand why people just fill up buckets full of them. But yeah. The anyway, yeah. we did it a little different this year. We yeah. focused more on fishing rather than scalloping. But we did both. Yeah, we did a little bit of everything. Um, I would say like the grouper fishing was challenging this mm -hmm. year. I mean, we couldn't catch a legal size grouper and the year prior, like it was, it was really good. It was really good. So it's crazy the way things just kind of change all the time, but it was okay. So like, I agree. It was very challenging to catch a grouper, but things were so different this year because we had the high hopes of going grouper fishing. Yeah. We were like, yeah, we did this last year. We, we got could it do in the it. bag, like we got our spots, no problem. And I was like, all right, let me go out there. Let's go drop a pinfish trap, 
drop a pinfish trap, pulled it up in the morning, and there was like four or five pilchards in there. But I came prepared. I was like, okay, well, if that doesn't, I mean, did I say pinfish? Yeah, I said pinfish in the pinfish trap. I thought I said pilchards because I'm about to start talking about pilchards. But basically, I came prepared. I brought an extra block of chum, and I was like, whatever. I'll just throw out some chum, mm -hmm. throw the cast net like we did last year. And we started chumming, and man, there was just like thousands of pil pilchards that just came up behind the boat through the net, just blacked out in one throw. And I was so pumped because I was like, man, if you got this many pilchards, like, you're gonna catch something. Yeah, we even got a few eels. I remember. Yeah, and the that was a little. Trap. Yeah, I was a little nervous about like pulling them out because mm -hmm. those things bite. But They're then a little we, aggressive too. Yeah, but then we went offshore and there was just some bait busts in. We're like, you know what? On our way offshore, let's just get into a couple of these, you know, schools of bait. See, so we cast into them and see what happens. And then we caught mahi. Yeah. That, and that was, was insane. I was just really confused because, you know, I don't know the fishery as well as like, you know, Clay does. So I was just looking at him like, is this typical? Is this something like you actually catch around here? Yeah, we were in like 15 feet of water, like seven miles offshore. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, on the West Coast, like you don't typically start catching mahi until you're about like 100 miles or more offshore. So yeah. the fact that we were seven miles offshore, like I was just mind blown. I was like, is this really happening right now? Like, am I dreaming? Right. And it was, it was just insane. And then we headed out, we went, caught a cobia. That was awesome. After that, we caught a grouper, um, caught some bonitas later yeah. on in the day, which was crazy too. Yeah. And then we just came back and uh, the next day we went scalloping with my cousin mm -hmm. and um, his wife, which she's pregnant and she gave birth to her baby, yeah. which is fantastic and Little healthy. Little Stetson. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, just came back, cooked up there at the Airbnb and mm -hmm. the Airbnb was awesome. Yeah, it was great. It was perfect location. And just such a good time. It was. Hanging it was. with family, catching fish, being mm -hmm. in a new area. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be like, a focus going forward in 2023 we're going to try to start doing a little more traveling yeah. with this new pathfinder we have mm -hmm. you ready for the next one i'm ready all right so this was my one of my top i would say it would have to be my top video what is that staniel k <laughs> yeah so it's exploring new bahamian islands spear fishing and swimming with pigs mm -hmm. so i have been longing for an Exumas trip. Like I wanted to go to the Exumas since I was very young, but my family wasn't so into like the boating. They were more into the cross country traveling. So I always used to mention them, hey, let's go, let's go. And like, they would like get well, my hopes up. you've got to mention, I mean, your dad's had a boat growing up yeah. your entire life. Yeah, exactly. So we've always had He just had wouldn't boats. go further than Bimini. Yeah, he just liked to stay, or Chubb. Like he mm -hmm. we would stay like nearby. So, um, we ended up like, you know, I would always bug him about it every year and then he'd be like, yeah, yeah, we'll go. And then we never went. So the fact that like we were able to go, it was, it was a dream come true for me. It was something that I've wanted for so long. And it was really a huge blessing to be able to, you know, have Maker's Air and Staniel K Yacht Club reach out to us and Giving give us, us the, the opportunity, opportunity to, go. to, yeah, to go there, showcase the resort and just, it's a beautiful location. And honestly, if you don't have a boat and you want the Exuma's experience, Daniel K does an amazing job with it. I mean, you just head on over through Maker's Air, which is an exceptional airline, like just from the moment you walk into checking in. And those little planes are so smooth. Too. Yes, it's just, it's, you're in, you're in awe from the moment you step into that plane yeah. to the moment that you like come back home. So, I mean, we got there. And it was just It was pretty amazing once we got there. I have... Everything is just so I, blue and the water is so clear. Yeah. Like, even just at the dock, like where you park the boats, yeah. like just clear water and you just look down and there's mangrove snappers like this big and jacks and just all kinds of fish that would never survive this close to shore <laughs> Here in, in the, the Keys, keys yeah. because like, man, we get people spear fishing off of our dock. Yeah. And it's just like, there's so much- Which is illegal, guys. Yeah, it is illegal. Don't do that, you have we to- We catch people doing all yeah, types three miles of crazy offshore things in order around to do our that. dock. Yeah. Hitting yeah. our dog with paddles, but I'm not gonna get into that. People are crazy around <laughs> here sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But 
you know, there's just so much respect in the Azumas, yeah. in the Bahamas in general. And I just yeah. wish people would respect our waters here in the Keys the way they respect the Bahamas. I know. But anyway, going back to what you were saying. The experience um, was amazing. Yeah, I think... We got our rental boat. Yeah, we had our rental, bo rental boat, and everybody was just so helpful there. Um, any any questions you have, they're willing to help you with anything. Um, it was just, overall, it, it it's something I definitely want to do again this year. And yeah. I want to... I know Clay is itching to take... The new boat. I can't say anything else. So we have another boat coming. coming yeah, the new boat. <laughs> you guys will see that. Yeah, next week. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the new boat over there. So, because yeah. I mean, he really enjoyed going over and and do, like renting the boat, but he's yes. just like he loves captaining and just doing it from his boat. So, like, I think that that's the next trip we're going to do and we're going to do a little more offshore fishing there because we couldn't we weren't allowed to go over On the to ocean the side. ocean side because so, it's rough and can i interrupt Sorry. yeah go I ahead mean, i don't mean to interrupt yeah but i just i would really like to add this to like my kind of side of things okay um i mean it was awesome with the rental boat and we got to experience so many different things from the pigs to the iguanas yeah. to the swimming with the turtles I feel like the fact that we had the rental boat, that is a great, that's probably the best way that you can experience the exhibit. And you forgot the cave. Sorry. And the cave, the Thunderball Grotto. Oh Unbelievable. Oh if you guys haven't seen, there, it's a two part video um, series that we did. Go yeah. watch them both if you haven't seen it because it was just beautiful. It was. But. It was a great way to learn the Exumas, but the fact that I didn't have like my own personal boat, like I feel like having your own boat in a place like the Bahamas is like having your home there. You know, like a boat is like an extension of my home because I spend so much time inside of it and I, it, I get so much joy out of boating and fishing, but I felt like if I would have had my own boat, it would have been so much better, but it's great. Like having the rental boat, we got to learn the waterway. We got to learn where all these places are. So when we come back this year, coming in 2023, we can do some of that stuff and a little more diving and like mm -hmm. fishing, which is what we really love. Like I said, if we just had our own boat. I would have just felt perfect, complete over there. But that's why we're <laughs> going to go back. But yeah. anyway, let's, all right, let's, let's move, move on. on. All right, number three. So this one was Clay's, like one of Clay's favorite videos I could say is living on our boat in dry Tortuga islands. So that is where we <laughs> took the 39 camping in the dry mm -hmm. Tortugas. So that trip was supposed to be a two night trip. It let's was. just, let's just give them the real deal. <laughs> we'll like what happened. Real story. So we, I hate to admit it. Yeah. But. Who cares? Whatever. Yeah. So we went over there and we were so excited to like go back to the dry tortugas because the last time we went there was our honeymoon, right? Mm -hmm. And there's always this race yeah. to get there and get back yeah. before dark. And the dry tortugas, it's like an hour and a half to two hour run yeah. off of Key West. So with good weather, depends. Yeah. yeah. So like the fact that we were gonna stay there overnight, mm -hmm. like we could experience and do so much more because yeah. we had two days there mm -hmm. or as many days as we wanted to camp there. So I was just so pumped to experience the Tortugas in a way that I'd yeah. never experienced it before. And just to watch the sunset, like mm -hmm. it was, it was so cool. I, I highly recommend doing that as well. Like yeah. if you guys have a boat that's capable of going out there to camp or just, they even have a ferry that takes you back and forth, do it. It is beautiful. Um, I really liked it. I enjoyed the experience. I'm glad it was more so him talking me into doing it. I love camping, um, but I was a little weary about, you know, we're going to be camping on the boat. You know, there's no one there to, re I, I just went in like thinking like, oh, if something bad happens, how are we going to get out? Like what's going to happen? No what, water, no, no water. There's nothing there. Yeah. So you, whatever you no bring is what you're going to have. Yeah. Um, but anyways, and then we had the bright idea that, yeah, I'm gonna be just like all these big bad survival YouTubers <laughs> and eat what I catch, which is what we do here at home. Yeah. But like we got some, you know, some good seasonings and all these good ingredients to put with it and it makes fish taste really good. But we're like, okay, we're just gonna bring a grill. We're not gonna bring any bread, no rice. Like we're not gonna bring like any extra seasonings. Carbs, just, yeah, specifically. Yeah, no carbs, just some Old Bay. And we're gonna eat some grouper and mutton snapper. So well, I'm gonna tell you what, that got old 
really quick. Yeah. So the way, okay, usually whenever we take like long trips, we're always bringing snacks. Like, I don't know what went over me and Clay. It was the I think the biggest thing was, is it was the day after Thanksgiving. So it was like, like you couldn't even think about food at that no, point. No, you couldn't. And so what we thought is like, okay, let's just live off the land. Um, we're going to keep it very simple. So we pack light and we can just head over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we... We did pack, but we, I, I don't know what was wrong with me. Maybe I was just thinking, hey, less it carbs was the day or something. After Thanksgiving. Yeah, That's I didn't bring was. any snacks. Like, what was I thinking? When you go camping, snacks are key, I've learned. <laughs> you don't have snacks, your camping trip, for me at least, is just not as fun. So, or a steak. Yeah, or a steak. So, <laughs> so we ended up fishing. And Clay, to, yeah. okay, so Clay gets this bright idea and he goes, hey, do you think I should ask, like, because this is our second night. <laughs> there was other campers There's other on campers. The He's like, do you think I should ask them to, like, swap with me fish for, I'm like, why would they do that? They're here. They the can catch all steak. the fish or steak. And I'm like, I'm like, why would they do that? They're here catching fish. Like, they can eat fish if they want it. It's not <laughs> like we're going, like, cross country and, like, there's no fish around. So, of course, he asked this one guy. He had the courage. And I was courage. just shut down. And he, he, was, was just, he was nice about it, but he was just like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I literally laughed because I was like, I mean, if I were, if the shoes were, were reversed, I don't think I would do that either. You know what? I think <laughs> if I were to go back and somebody were to ask me, I would say yes, because I would be like, look, man, I've been there. I'm going to help you out right now. <laughs> but... No, I think that that was really funny. But I mean, just being in the boat, putting the cover over it, putting the air mattress inside, like it was just something so cool. It was so cozy. And it was just something we've never done no. before. Just a really cool experience. Yeah. And just waking up in the morning, I was so excited to just see yeah. the sunrise and see the <laughs> island wake up. And just experience something that most people will probably never experience in their life. And, you know, what's so hard about Life by the Bow sometimes is these experiences that we experience from the clear water to seeing things like the fort and the sunrise and the beaches. It's so beautiful that you just want to take it in up here. But I know ultimately my job is to show it to you guys yeah so that's that was hard like to just sit there and pick up the camera and film it rather than kind of just like soaking it all in but once i get into the editing room and i put it all together i'm like man i i have something better than a memory i have a replication of what i experience and i think it's so cool that we get to pass that and deliver that on to you guys yeah, yeah. but that trip was just unbelievable it was and something we're going to be doing again oh but absolutely this time in the pathfinder okay so there was actually something going on that he forgot to mention at night and it was keeping me up all night the boat kept swaying and eventually we lost an anchor so our back anchor pulled in the middle of the yes. night and then our front anchor we were having issues having set once we got there yeah um big reason why the new boat has the anchor that it has yeah and basically i remember before the sun went down we were at the dock and we we're filleting the fish and there's just like this 12 foot bull shark yeah right there off the island and i just knew since our anchor was pulling the only way that we're going to get it going to be able to get it to set is if I were to jump in the water at night, set the anchor into the ground just so I could sleep well at night. And I had to do that and it was really sketchy. Yeah. Especially because in the dry Tortugas, you're not allowed to have any underwater lights on on your boat at night. Yeah. So we weren't even able to light up the water to even see what was going on. So that was a little sketchy. Look, if you're gonna go and do these trips, like they are hardcore. Yeah. Like there is going to be little things that are going to get in the way of just having just this unobstructed unobstructed amazing time and you know it's cool to just face those challenges and just put together the videos and just do what we do man i mean it's just i'm so excited to just get back at it honestly yeah same here so number two <laughs> boating to the bahamas for an epic yellowfin tuna fishing frenzy this was 
the trip that I had been dying to go. I remember the year before we were sitting here talking about it and I couldn't even give my input on it because I missed this trip. So about two years prior, yeah. I had done this trip with my dad mm -hmm. and a family friend, Mark. Mm -hmm. And basically it's something I'd never done before. Mm -hmm. And typically when you go after a new species, yeah. like we do down here in the Keys, Man, it takes us sometimes five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tries just to catch that one fish, mm -hmm. get yourself dialed in, so that way you know exactly what to do, what to expect. You have to do the trial and error. But I nailed it the first time we ever tried to catch this fish over in the Bahamas. That was two years ago. Stephanie wasn't able to go because she had a different career at that time, which career paths have just completely changed in our lives for the past two years, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that we owe to you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. But yeah. this time we went for round two and it was Stephanie's time to shine. Yeah. So it was not only my first yellowfin tuna. It was massive. It was a really nice one. For the I, Bahamas. Yeah. So I remember uh, your dad and I were sitting there and I was hooked up and he was like, oh my God, because I was fighting it for a little bit. He's like, man, that's a, that's a good size one. Do you want to trade off? And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, I'm like, I'm not going to trade off. Um, and if there's one thing you know about me is like, I do not give up. Like mm -hmm. I said, somebody was actually talking smack to you prior to that trip saying oh, that yeah. you couldn't do it. Yeah. They're like, are you sure you can pick up a yellowfin tuna? Like, you know how big they get? And anyway, so somebody was saying, you know, ba basically doubting that I could and even so bring one up. So that's what kept Stephanie going so I was throughout just like, the entire time. Yeah, and he's like, you sure you don't want to try? I'm like, nope, this is my fish. I don't, <laughs> I don't consider it my fish unless I bring it to the boat. So I'm like reeling it in, reeling, reeling it in. And man, I'm just dripping sweat. And, you know, of course, when you guys see the video, it's all short and sweet, but it was like a pretty long fight. It's about 30 minutes, I would say. Yeah, it was like a 30 minute <clears throat> fight. And the thing is, you don't want to put too much tension on a fish that big either. But at the same time, you do because yeah. you want to try to get them away from the sharks. Exactly. So we were dealing with the sharks and, you know, I'm, I'm a tough cookie, but like, I mean, it's also really hard fish to like bring up. So I'm like finally getting him to the surface. Man, when I see that color, I'm like, oh my goodness, would you look at that? And I remember Lon cat, uh, gaffing the fish, but it Which was so heavy that he couldn't even really bring it over. Well, th this is what I knew ultimately yeah. from the beginning. Like my dad, I mean, he, I mean, he's over 60 years old, but he goes to the gym. Like yeah, I know my yeah. dad's strong, like he's got it. He's yeah. with it. Yeah. But at the same exact time, I saw how big the fish was. I knew he could get it in the boat. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, is like my first thing was, Stephanie, you need to help him and get this thing in as soon as possible because you don't know if he could shake off the gaff. Yeah. The shark yeah. comes up and eats him. So I'm just sitting there screaming, get him in the boat, get him in the boat, Stephanie, help him. And there was just so much excitement, not oh. only because I'm here with my dad, <laughs> Like I'm here with my wife. She yeah. just caught this yellowfin tuna. It's massive. I mean that that yellowfin alone right there could feed like ten people. Oh, it and was. It just kind of goes back to the whole backstory of just going after a fish for the second time ever and just nailing it. You know, there's all this preparation, this mm -hmm. anticipation in your head. Man, is it even gonna work? Mm -hmm. I remember that morning just going to catch bait. You know, there's just so much anticipation. You can't sleep the night before. We're going to be able to catch the bait. And then once you get the bait, well, we got to keep that bait alive, you know, for 150 miles just to get to the spot yeah. in order to fish for these fish. You and better. then you have to clear Bahamian customs. Yeah. And then you better make sure you have all your fuel. You better make sure that your boat's working. You better make sure you have all your tackle because guess what? Anything that you need, you're not getting in the Bahamas right away. No. So there's just all that preparation. There's all that anticipation. There's so much emotion. And I just remember when we got back to uh, the West End that night and just sitting down there at dinner, I just had the biggest smile on my oh, face. I'm my just gosh. like, yeah, we did it. I know. Again. I know. And I was just so pumped. Yeah, I was so, so was excited. I. I was, I was, I was living my life during dinner. I was like, my God, we take pictures. <laughs> Let's take pictures. Guys, I did it. Like yeah. I was so happy. But honestly, 
kudos to Clay because I mean, without him, I couldn't have caught that mm -hmm. fish. I mean, I always we always joke around like I'm always like, ah, I catch more fish than you, bigger fish. But in all honesty, like Clay does put all the work into prepping the boat, prepping the tackle, and you know. And I'm I really happy that I have you doing that because I enjoy fishing and it's always yeah. like a great time when we actually set out to do something and it actually plays out because that doesn't always happen. <laughs> and it was so enjoyable for me too. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. It's so enjoyable too because like I said, not only am I doing it with my wife, but I'm doing it with my dad. You know, my dad has taught me everything when it comes to boating. Um, not fishing, actually, which is funny. Um, but he still enjoys going with me, and it's so cool to show him all these fish that we catch now. And uh, having him there, having my wife there, and just being able to do that with both of them, it's just um, memories that I will remember for the rest of my life. And I thought it was just really, really cool. It was. It was a really cool time. I had a great time. All right, so... You know, number one. Number one. It's funny. I've noticed like a lot of our top 10 videos always have Bahamas drips in them. I know. <laughs> and that's what 2023, like I, I want to focus on just bigger and more bad, you know, trips. I don't want to say the word. No, but just. I'm not saying it, obviously, but just keep on going. All right. They get the point. All right. So number number one is, da -da -da -da. I'm, I'm sure like everyone that we got so i think everybody enjoyed this one. yeah i think but everyone did you have to make sure to start telling can i let okay me, let, let me just me say the title let me just say the yeah title. say the title okay so florida to the bahamas in a small boat we took the 23 foot pathfinder over mm -hmm. to bimini which is not that far for us and like we've got a lot okay, of lash back wait. on this video backlash okay, ba i mean but we let got me a lot of let me start on this, this one okay. i'm sorry i don't okay. mean to cut you off okay but because there's so much that goes into this story other than just crossing a bay boat. Oh, over yeah. There, which was amazing. Yeah. But what I think is what I, my most favorite part about that trip, right, is prior to going, I knew that, look, we're not going to go over there and do this alone. Mm -mm. We could very easily. Yeah. But it's not a good look. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's not what we should be telling other people to do. We could get over there no problem, but people going for the first time in a bay boat like yeah. that, um, definitely I do not suggest. And we had larger center uh, center consoles Which with I'm, us. Which I'm getting to. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting to that. So it started with, I'm sorry, I just want to tell it, you know, the way that I started it, which yeah. was with an Instagram post. Yeah. And that's what's so crazy about this. These are people that came and started watching Life by the Bow. Mm -hmm followed me on Instagram mm -hmm. and then I posted an Instagram story taking the 23 Pathfinder over to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Who wants, Who wants to, go? to go? Yeah. And like some people messaged me back and they just like started laughing and I'm like, no, like I'm serious. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And then I just started going back and forth with people like, yeah, you want to go? You want to cross over with us? And like, this was like two days before the trip. Yeah. And mind you, we, the reason why it was such a last minute trip is because we planned it perfectly with the weather. Always with the yeah, weather. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was the right weather window to head over and head back mm -hmm. to where we felt comfortable, you know, bringing the 23 over. Yeah. So keep and going. Like, Sorry. There was only uh, one group of people, which was Angel and Francesca, which are actually our friends yeah. that we could actually get to go. But everybody else that went were just like viewers of Life by the Bow, yeah. which was so cool. Yeah. So like, not only did we have like this big group of people going over there, but like I got to see Life by the Bow essentially through others' experiences like on this firsthand because those people told me, they were like, we've watched your videos, we've wanted to go over and do what you've done, but I've just, never really thought of like doing it myself because it seems so complicated mm -hmm. but everyone was like okay if we're going with the guy that we watched do this like who's better to go with than with him so i thought it was just an amazing opportunity not only to just meet these people but just to see their faces and like uh talk about their experience thus far once we actually got there because it's, I, I couldn't even imagine what it was like for those people to just experience the Bahamas for the very first time. Yeah, and it was, it was, it was amazing because I mean, we're putting 
of we're putting you who who right now is watching our video, we're putting a face to it. And it's yeah. you know, some people are hesitant to come up to us and like introduce themselves, but you know, we put this out there so we expect you guys to come up, you know. So if, exactly. if you if you want to like come over to us and introduce yourself, like don't don't hesitate. Don't ever hesitate. And like one thing I have noticed is like everyone who does view Life by the Bound is a fan are very like-minded people. And they're all such genuine people that we have met along the way. And it's it's just, it's great. Like I, I it almost- We've met some really good people. Oh, amazing people and like amazing families. And it's something that they all can enjoy together. So, you know, that was all in itself a highlight. You know, a lot, I'm thinking of a few of them were like, man, you guys are actually much cooler in person than you are in the <laughs> videos. So I was like, oh, really? I don't know if that's a compliment. I don't know if that's a compliment or, or not. But, or what that really is. But, it was, but hey, whatever. Yeah, so we'll we, roll with it. Yeah, and they got to experience Bimini and they, and they didn't do much fishing themselves. I remember we I all, wouldn't. No. Shoot, I'd just go around, see the Sapona, enjoy yeah. the water. Yeah. But and towards like the end, like in the middle of the video, like we all, while Clay was lobstering, we were all just parked around and just yeah, hanging cool. out, talking. And then like a few of them jumped in trying to catch lobster and like, man, this is way too deep for us. But it was like <laughs> just fun. So like we just all ended up hanging out. Well, it was funny because like there was this one group of guys, they were awesome. Yeah. And we ended up like having a really good time with them. And, yeah. Like, I would like to consider them friends. At yeah, this point. for sure. And, um, one of the guys was like talking all this smack, like, oh yeah, like I can lobster, I can free dive, no problem. <laughs> and um, and sure they're enough, the other friends are just like, like just sitting like, there laughing, laughing at everything he said. Yeah, it was kind of funny though. Because there was one point where he dove down and it was like 30 feet where we were diving and he just couldn't stay down. And then like, he was like, oh yeah, there's like a lobster or a lionfish. I can't remember what it was. And he's like going down, trying to get it up and back, up and back. And I caught word and I was like, oh, there's a lobster or a lionfish over there. So I swim over, I dive down and I get whatever it was, whether it was a lionfish or a so lobster. So he comes back up, it was a huge joke. He comes back up, he goes, you caught my lionfish. And then everybody just starts busting out laughing on the boat. Yeah, it was and it funny. was just cool. Like, you know, Bimini is so plentiful, full of lionfish and lobster. Mm -hmm. And we were just all parked together, just catching lobster and lionfish yeah. as a big group yeah. that we put together through life by the bow. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is what I cherish about that trip more than anything, because it really just opened my eyes and my perspective based on the support and the inspiration or how we can inspire other people to just do what we love and just mm -hmm. enjoy it just as much as we do. And I think that that is something that I enjoy most about Life by the Bow, but we haven't even talked about the trip thus far. So I'll let you kind of go ahead back to where you were trying to begin. Oh, I'm sorry, so I didn't mean to cut beginning. you off. I just wanted to add all that oh, prior to oh, talking okay. about No, it. that's fine, that's fine. Um, so. This video, we got a lot of views, but we also got a lot of backlash in the yeah. comments, I remember. like From both, from from both, both ends, ends though, yeah. which is funny. So, like, one thing is, is, you know, Bimini is about, what is it, 80 miles from us? Off of, from where we crossed, it was about 60 miles. 60 when we miles of open ocean, dock, yeah. It's 90 miles. So, for us, let's, just to give you a little, like, backstory, when we're going sword fishing, we're, like, going 30 miles. 30 miles. miles. 30 miles off and like when you're 30 miles off what's another 30 miles to go back because I mean you're going there 30 miles and coming back in 30 miles I mean you're still running about the same distance you are so I mean there's a lot that can happen in everyday fishing so that's one thing and another thing is is you know we came prepared we had an e-perp we had a satellite phone and we also came with larger vessels boats. yeah and with what, the what dual thought, engine too like yeah, so, that's what i thought was funny people were talking smack and they're like oh you guys went but you went with small boats and we're like no these are 27 almost 30 foot center consoles yeah. with twin engines on the back of yeah. them like i to me that's not a small boat no, 27 no. feet's big yeah yeah i mean obviously weather plays a huge part in it too mm -hmm. and you know you you know when to turn around and when not to. But you it know? was just glass It was calm. glass calm. It was the perfect conditions. So, I mean, is it something I would do again? Absolutely. Yeah. I would do it 100%. I mean, there's people that have had bad experiences doing things like that. But I mean, we, we're coming from a very, you know, 
very experienced boating lifestyle. Like we do this on Often. the regular yeah. and we are, I've been going to Bimini since I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So like for me, a crossing's not that big of a deal. Yeah. But you, you know, know what to look for in the yes, forecast. Yes. And we, we nailed it, honestly. Um, and I felt confident because we had the support mm -hmm. behind us, but the weather was just beautiful. Yeah. And then once we got there, I'm saying it, I don't care. <laughs> the first day we decided to go bone fishing and basically I got up on top <laughs> yeah. of a flat and look, our 23 Pathfinder, that is a bad little boat, man. Yeah. Like you get in some shallow water. Yeah. But not bone fishing type of water. Oh my God. Tides started dropping real fast. We got beached. Yeah. So I, I'll admit it. Yeah. Things happen. Yeah. You know? So we were on the backside and we're like, hey, let's just go try bone fishing because, you know, there's a ton of bone fish out there. Mm -hmm. And when we were going, we saw a ton of bone fish. A ton of bone fish. Just tailing at the surface. And we're like, oh my gosh, try to cast it, cast at it. And we would try. And like, and we, we got caught up. We got caught up just trying to catch them that like we ended up just, and it's all sand back there. There too it was just like a pretty beautiful beach like if we weren't like beached ourselves <laughs> like it's a beautiful beach to just hang out we actually got out and just like hung walked out for the around night. hung like, out just stuff yeah and I, we made the best of it for but sure day two we woke up and it was just unbelievable yeah i mean it was like a mirror it was yeah. glass you would look down and it's like holy crap like watch out there's a rock but next time like the next thing you know like you're looking at the sonar it's 15 feet yeah and you're just seeing straight down because it's so calm the clarity was, was perfect unbelievable i remember clay and i just getting out there just we're riding and we screamed because we were so happy it was, so beautiful. It was beautiful it's just like one of those moments like ah it's amazing i'm on top of the yeah. world you know and it's like here we are in a 23 foot boat and we're able to do everything that Bimini has to offer amazing bone fishing mm -hmm. yet we weren't successful so um but we were already on on a high from the weather yeah and then we were just like let's go try some deep dropping let's try to catch some fish and then we start dropping and we're just pulling up one yellow eye after another. another. Yeah. And I'm like, this is unbelievable. Like we got the weather, we got the fishing. Then we're just like, what else can we do? And then that's when we sent the text to everyone like, hey, we're going to go lobstering. You know, yeah. we're going to these coordinates who wants to come with. And mm -hmm. that's when all the boats just kind of got together. The sun starts going down. You know, we're playing music. We're laughing. We're having a good time. We're all diving. And then we all just hauled butt back to the dock. Went to the casino that night, hung out with everybody, got to share, you know, boating stories, fishing stories, and just like really enjoy the time that we spent with these people. And it's just unbelievable what Life by the Bow has created for us. Mm -hmm. um, our audience, you guys, I mean, I couldn't imagine a better thing in the world, honestly. No. You know, you could probably ask me if there's anything that I want in this world and there's probably nothing that I appreciate more than my family and my audience through YouTube. Yeah. Honestly, there, yeah. there's nothing that I appreciate more than that. And with that being said, you know, that's why we're going into 2023. Um, we're, we work really hard. Yeah. But some way, somehow, I'm going to find a way to work harder than last year yeah. just to make and produce the best content that we can possibly produce for you guys. Um, because that's what I owe to you because you guys have been tremendous and given us so much through so much support through our channel. Um, and that funnels down to our clothing company. And Stephanie is a realtor and she has done. I Sorry, I'm going to have to you know, give her a little bit of a congratulations here. She has done fantastic in real estate this past year because of you guys, you know, yeah. she has met so many clients and she has done such a good job because she has met so many of you guys mm -hmm. um, that are watching and have purchased homes or listed homes with her. And for all of you guys that have purchased Avail Gear, unbelievable. We have almost a hundred products now. I know that it's just mind blowing. Everything yeah. has just grown tremendously. And it's unbelievable talking about it this year. And it's just so cool and so fun to think about 2023 and how it's going to play out. Yeah, it's just, it's been an amazing year. And, you know, last year, this time, I didn't know what to expect coming into 2022. And it, it has scary. surpassed, yeah, it has surpassed everything I thought it'd be. It was 
it was hands down like the best year I've ever, ever had. Like just between like traveling and just, you know, traveling, business, catching and, business and, and catching too. vacationing and catching, you know, my first yellowfin tuna and who knows what else is out there that we're going to start doing. I mean, I still have a marlin on my bucket yep. list and I also want to catch a bluefin tuna. So let's see what happens in the near future. <laughs> but anyways, um, huge, huge thank you to everyone watching um, everyone that had re has really like just supported us in every way possible. Another thing I'd like to add, um, <clears throat> something that we had talked about last year, and I would just like to shed some light on it this year, is a big goal of ours for 2020. Well, really this year was <clears throat> to gain sponsors. And not just any sponsors. Sponsors that we feel are top tier. You know, like sponsors we really believe in because we want to make sure if we're being backed by a company. Um, we believe in them We as believe well. in them as well. And we want to push someone like further that we believe in and that we are going to use their products naturally. So with that being said, I would definitely like to highlight Pathfinder Boats, yeah. Contender Boats, Gus Toy Box, Yamaha Outboards, Garmin Marine, um, Power Pole and waterland sunglasses and they're going to help us throughout this year you know they are people that we would or companies that we would really like to highlight and yeah. thank because you know a lot of what's been going on here behind the scenes in the channel and on the channel um has to do with their support as well um but yeah that is pretty much it everything i would like to add and I think that basically wraps it up. We hope everybody had an amazing year. Mm -hmm. We're so excited for 2023, and we hope that everybody has an amazing start, an amazing year. And the biggest thing that I can say is, you know, there's three things that I'm living my life by. That is to be kind, be positive, and work hard. And with all of those three things in mind, I don't think that there's anything that anyone can't accomplish if it's feasible, if it's realistic. So I just wanted to pass that along to you guys in order to just start 2023 off in the right direction and just have a great year. Thank you all for watching and continuing to support us. We hope you've had an amazing 2022 and we wish you all the best in 2023, but we'll have to see you guys next week in 2023. Which is also next year. That's right. Sounds so far away, but so close. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in with us. This long means so much to mm -hmm. us. But till next year, see you guys then. Bye.